Okay, so I just finished my cryptocurrency taxes for 2019 and I ran into a lot of roadblocks and a lot of problems. So I want to tell you guys what I did to solve those problems. I went ahead and made notes along the way. So I'm going to go through these notes and uh, maybe help you avoid some time consuming problems that you may also encounter. So here I say regarding cointracking.info, which is what I use. Verify the deposits and withdrawals are only needed to show accurate coin summary at bottom of enter coins page. They are not needed for accurate capital gains. So when you're at cointracking.info, which is not cointracker.io, by the way, I got confused about that for a while. If you go to enter coins, overview and all that. You guys may already know this, but I did get a little confused about it as to how important it is to enter my deposits and withdrawals to the exchange. Well, what I learned was the only reason you need to enter the deposits and withdrawals is if you want cointracking.info to give you an accurate summary of the amount you still have in that exchange. So this summary at the bottom of the enter coins page will be accurate if you've entered the deposits and withdrawals in and out of an exchange. And by the way, this isn't going to tell you what you own necessarily. It's only going to tell you what is in the exchange. Anything you withdraw to private wallet, private address, or even to a different exchange would not necessarily be included in this. It would be included in this, I suppose, if you're doing two different exchanges and they're all included in all the transactions you're entering, if that makes any sense. So you can basically just enter all your trades only and get an accurate tax report. And in here, to get to your tax report, go like that. And down here, we see my tax report. These are different versions. So here it says I purchased TurboTax Premier download from Amazon, cheaper than online or download from TurboTax. So I got the download from Amazon, which was cheaper than the download from TurboTax and which was cheaper than the online version. But I don't really care. I'm willing to use either one if it works better for me. The problem is the online version did not work the way I wanted it to. The online version has the ability to import from bitcoin.tax or cointracker.io and other services that are similar to the one I use, which is cointracking.info. But I prefer cointracking.info after comparing it with cointracker.io. And what I like to do is get the TXF file from cointracking.info and go from there. So here we are on the tax report page I showed you a minute ago. Here's uh, what I did for 2019. You could hit load report. And in load report, if you have less than about 2000 transactions or you're not actually importing transactions into TurboTax, instead you're importing the capital gains report. So don't make that mistake. But TurboTax online these days will not import from cointracking.info. But I have this TurboTax one right here, which creates a TXF file, which is what I use. If you have more than about 2,000 tran uh, transactions, then you might do what I do and group all entries by day. Because it seems like, uh, unfortunately, the exchanges, many of the exchanges, I know Binance did this. If you bought, let's say 500 uh, mana in one transaction, well, it's going to print out a hundred transactions that it went through to get you the, the, the total amount that you asked for. In the stock market world, you don't have that. You just have that one transaction that you asked for of that 100, let's say, mana in this case. So to me, it makes total sense to group all entries. And instead of having 3,000 transactions, maybe you only have 80 because it just groups them by day. I've heard people say that you can't do that and upload it to and uh, fire taxes with those group by day transactions, but it makes absolutely no sense to me. It's just a problem with Binance that they give you your data that way. But when we look at all the stock, ex stock market exchanges out there, they don't do that. They just give you the transaction that you asked for, not the breakdown 
breakdown of two to 200 different transactions. So I always, um, I mean, unless I have less than 2,000 transactions, I guess I could do not do that. But I always group the transactions and uh, I use that data, I deal with that. So, so we're gonna take the TurboTax uh, file, which is TXF, I went ahead and tried to reinstall TurboTax. I'm thinking it's not going to work because I've already used it to file my returns. Maybe this is a way for it not to allow you to do a bunch of people's returns with the software. I don't know. But we'll see if we can get it to work so I can show you a little bit. Anyway, the TurboTax uh, download software uh, works just fine for me. So anyway, when you're in TurboTax online, once you start working on stuff um, like income and stuff like that, you'll have this menu on the side here. So um, something interesting is that you can go down to tax tools, tools, and you could save your 2019 return to your computer. You could do that anywhere along the process. And what's interesting is by doing that, that's a TXF file that is saved to your computer. So you could take that TXF file and import it into the download version of TurboTax. So you could do like half your work on here because maybe the online version is easier for some things, who knows. And then you could uh, save it like I just showed you and import it into the uh, download version and then continue your work that way. Sorry for the crazy sounds uh, that are coming through from outside, but uh, I just, I'm trying to get this information to you, so bear with me. Uh, anyway, so you can uh, save this to your computer and transfer it to the download version, uh, but I don't think you can do the same from the download version back into this. You could transfer last year's into the online version, but not the current year you're working on, I don't believe. While we're here, I might as well try to show you how the cryptocurrency uh, looks on the online version. So as I said, the coin tracking.info is not one of the things that they let you transfer in to the online version. But if you really needed to transfer, transfer into the online version, you could always just find out what the format of Cointracker.io is, or maybe Bitcoin.tax, and just match the format and transfer it on over. So for example, here is what coin tracking gives me as a CSV file, which I would probably use if they ever added that to the online version of TurboTax. So here's its format, amount, currency or asset, date acquired, date sold, blah, blah, blah. I could just, come over to the cointracking.io, cointracker.io, and I could just see that their format may be a little different. That's cointracking, cointracker.io. Let's say I wanted to convert this over to that format. So no matter how many I had here, it wouldn't matter, it'd be just as simple. So I see that amount is the same, asset name is the same, currency, asset name, that's the same thing. Date acquired is the same, sold is the same, proceeds, that's not the same. So looks like proceeds, let's just take proceeds, cost basis. I'm gonna, I just did control X to cut that. Now I'm going to the left to the spot where I wanna place it, control V, and I've just overwritten what was already there. Proceeds, cost, gain, loss. So I now have everything except for type is missing. So I'd have to find out what the wording of the type is uh, at cointracker.io. I believe the wording of it is short dash term, not positive. So I'd basically have to add that in there and enter it all throughout here. Short term, long term, whatever it is. And uh, then I could just, delete those uh, headings that were on my coin tracking. And now I basically have a cointracker.io formatted table. So I could save this as a CSV file and I could upport, I can import it to TurboTax Online through the cointracker.io. So that's how you would do something like that. And here's Bitcoin.tax. Here's their format. I could do the same thing and upload it through Bitcoin.tax. So that's an interesting piece of information some people might not know. Now, one of the main reasons I used the download version and why I was so frustrated with the online version of TurboTax is that after I had uploaded all these transactions, when I got to the final tax report, come to find out 
they just summarized, not like this, this isn't what they did, but on the online version, they simply summarized all of my transactions into one line. And that was so frustrating to me because when they summarize with one line, then you have to mail in a separate paper with all of these transactions that actually took place. But by using the downloadable version, which simply imports the same way that stock trades would import, the reporting came out the way I wanted it, which I was so happy to have, which is all my transactions listed. So when I do my e-file, all of it is sent. I don't have to mail anything. So that was another reason I was very excited that the download TurboTax version was the one for me. Well, once again, I'm sorry I can't show you the actual TurboTax download software, uh, exactly how to do it, but uh, I do have this written down here. So in the download, to upload the TXF file, on the download version, once it's open, you're gonna go to the top where it says file, and then you're gonna choose import from accounting software, other financial software, then you're gonna choose the file from your computer, then you'll continue and import and then be done and that'll bring everything in. Once you do that, you're probably gonna to wanna to change the institution name because that's not gonna come through. Your institution name can simply be cointracking.io, I mean cointracking.info or cointracking.io or bitcoin.tax. From everything I've read, that's an appropriate thing to enter there. But if you wanna change that institution name, after doing this up there, you should be looking at the import that you just did and you'll have an edit button. So hit the edit button. Then it should ask you, do you need to change the institution name? If it doesn't ask you that, then go down to the bottom of the page right around here and you'll see something called show relevant form. You can make those changes there also if the prompt does not show up. Now, by the way, if for some reason you need a to convert a CSV file into a TXF file, you probably won't have to do that. But uh, if for some reason you have to, uh, I found this thing here, $6.99, or the free edition, you could do 10 trans transactions at a time. But this is very useful. Uh, it allows you to uh, transfer CSV files into TFX files, and it even has a choice. Well, let's just take a look at it. Here it is right here, TXF Creator, it's called. So it gives you different CSV formats that you can use and bring in. And it gives you some that are already, it already has in its system. Scott Trader, E-Trade, TD Ameritrade. I, I use generic format too, because I, I have to make my own CSV similar to how I showed you to change it to Bitcoin.tax or what have you. And here it tells you exactly what you need as the headings. Symbol, quantity, date acquired. So you can make that and get it all the way you need it, just like you did with what I showed you earlier. So I use generic format too. Go choose your file. I already named mine Capital Gains to TXF Creator. And you can go next. Total number uh, transactions, about 83 there. You can go to, oh, here's where it says you can combine daily trades. Um, that's not gonna do much for me because I've actually already done that. Um, Cointracker.info gives you that option also. But um, here's another place you could do that, which I think is so cool. So just, you would click that if you wanted to do that. Then you go next, you export to TXF and save that file. Now, after you import your capital gains into TurboTax, you'll see that every line says need info. And uh, that was very frustrating to me because uh, I've seen other people online run into this problem. What it is, is it doesn't uh, bring in the code, whether it's short-term, long-term, short-term that's already been reported to the IRS, short-term that's not been reported, etc. But what I learned to do is just ignore that because the final 8949 form will be marked correctly. And that's really all that matters. And it is marked correctly based on this right here. N712 is basically the same thing as ticking box C right here on form 8949. That's what that number means. So you can actually open your TXF file in Notepad if for some reason this is a different number and you could just search and replace this number, whatever number is here, whatever N number is here with 712 and then save it as the TXF again. 
which should be in UTF-8 format. This is Notepad. So you just put a dot .txf right here and it would save it just the way you need it. I actually went and found out what these codes mean and uh, you could do a screenshot here if you want to understand that a little better. Here, hold on. Don't screenshot yet. That's everything. You can do a screenshot of this if you want and it gives you what the different codes mean. This was hard to find. And then here I wrote uh, about the TurboTax download. If you make changes, make sure you hit, uh, you know, like if you deleted a whole uh, import of stuff and re-imported, uh, make sure you hit the review that's in capital letters. It's up uh, right around here in the program. Um, just to make sure it recalculates everything. Here's some uh, really good information that uh, I learned. Just give it a read through if, uh, see if any of it helps you out. Sorry. I wrote that header names are optional in your CSV. Uh, apparently in CSV, if you misspell something up here, apparently it doesn't matter because all the programs are gonna care about is that the first row is correct second row, third row, fourth row. They're not gonna read the, the names in your header here. So if you have these in the right order, and you could call, change this name to uh, Cool Cryptos, whatever you want, and apparently it's not gonna make a difference. I just found that to be interesting information. Now, if you do have to use the online version, here's something that I found very helpful. Let's say you upload all your transactions in CoinTracker. Well, in 2019, there is no way to delete those transactions if you want to re-upload a better version that you've changed and updated to be more accurate. There's really no way to delete it. So, but I found a way to delete it, which is a little workaround, I guess. And that's that, I don't have any on here to show you uh, how to do it. And that's basically that after you add your cryptos, on the next page, it's going to ask you which ones are taxable. And you can basically select all or select none or select whatever you want. Well, if you go ahead and go back into those, redo this and select none, which means you're saying they're not taxable, and then you go to the next continue, then by saying they're not taxable, it appears to me from everything I've been able to see that it basically erases all those transactions so that you can start again. So that may be very helpful to you if you've loaded all your capital gain transactions and you found an error and you wanna re-upload and delete them. That's the way to do it. I just saw a mistake and I corrected it. This uh, refers to cointracking.io. So if you screenshotted this, screenshot it again to get that accurate. It did say the wrong thing. It said .info. Um, <clears throat> they say that uh, when if you import the cointracking.info on the online version, cointracking.info tells you that even though the online version tells you there's a limit on how many transactions you can upload, that with the cointracking.info upload, you actually can upload as many as you want and that the warning on TurboTax online is not correct about this particular upload. Some of these things were just helpful for me and they may not mean anything to you. Just don't worry about them. Okay guys, I think that's really all I have to share with you today. I hope this has been helpful and I hope you made some big money.